Recently, a 25-year-old woman named Tashana Ward passed away after leaving a Milwaukee emergency room after waiting over two hours to be seen. Tashana went into the ER complaining about chest pain and tightness of breath. She was briefly seen and an x-ray was taken before being told it would take two to six hours before she would be actually treated. Eventually, Tashana got fed up, went home, and left only to be brought back by ambulance hours later to the same exact hospital where she ultimately passed away. And unfortunately, we hear stories like this all the time of people in the medical community not taking the pain of black patients seriously, especially women who are pregnant. So ladies, how can we deal with this implicit bias that exists in medicine? Well, I think you have to change laws. I mean, the, it, you know, some laws have to be written to protect women, especially women of color. I've yeah. had too many of my friends pass because of, of, you know, I have one friend in college, I remember, she gave birth and she passed during birth. Wow. And, um, you know, you, you hear about it all. I was reading a story um, about a young man and he went with his wife to the doctor and she was complaining and he went and he was trying to get help, but he felt like he wasn't forceful enough because he didn't want to be seen as an angry black man. Mm -hmm. And because he wasn't as forceful, they didn't pay attention to her. Mm -hmm. And so, and she ultimately passed and he has this guilt because of the stigma that black people have that we're angry, that we're loud, that we complain, that it's not really that bad. We have to change the, by the laws and by the thought processes that people have about us as a culture. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, stuff like this really hits home because it is so deeply rooted in systems and in history that this country has had in just really access. So first of all, like when it comes to medical access, like black people just didn't have the same access to medicine and to hospitals. And so there's a certain culture of how to handle yourself in healthcare mm -hmm. that a lot of black people simply just never learned and don't know mm -hmm. and haven't had access to. And culturally, going to the doctor is still something that like as a black community, we're mm -hmm. still trying to like enforce and teach because I've seen a lot of memes like have started coming up on Instagram trying to teach people how to handle themselves at the doctor so they can get the treatment that they want. Like mm -hmm. making sure that if you ask for a test to be done and it's refused, telling them, please put that on my chart. Right. You know, yeah. so that you're holding the physician accountable. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you try your best to bring someone yeah. with you. Take somebody with you. So that you're you. not the only person fighting on your behalf. You have another person there to not only yeah. fight on your behalf, but be a witness to anything shady that goes yes. down. Yeah. Right. And also just simply understanding that you deserve to have a voice. A lot of times, yes. a lot of times we think it's the doctor. The doctor knows everything. The doctor knows everything. The doctor has all ask the knowledge questions. and we think that we don't have a right to ask questions. Right. We mm -hmm. think we don't have a right to know about what they're going to do to us. You know, I have had a wrist, I had a wrist fracture when I was younger and I told my mom, I feel like I have a stress fracture. And I had been to this doctor before and the doctor said I didn't. He said, I didn't. He was like, no, you're fine. But my mom listened to me. Also, listen to your kids, by the way. And my, <laughs> mom, my mom listened to me and was like, I'm going to tell him. And so she emailed him and said, you know, Amanda still doesn't feel comfortable with the diagnosis that you gave her. I'd like you to continue to review her chart. He, it was Thanksgiving weekend. I think he just wanted to get out the office early. Mm. And so he ended up actually heeding my mom's, uh, you know, serious, like, do this. And he actually looked at my chart. Not only did I have one stress fracture, I had three. Wow. In my wrist. And it turned out that I had like missing bones in both hands and some like congenital something. But it's like, it was because my mom is a nurse and I think mm. that's what made her feel, you know, like Healthy. strong to be able to yeah. be like, no. But a lot of people don't feel that they can do that and they should and have agency. Yes. But this is the thing too. She had an enlarged heart condition. Yeah. And anytime it's short in the and shortness of breath or if it's a heart, it's they a whole different right priority. So yes. that was bias. Right. And that's what I'm saying Absolutely. about things have to be changed. There have to be laws written yes. that when those laws are broken, yes. that, you know, people that... need to be held responsible. Exactly. Yes. Because literally, it's very strange that this happened because so many of us have been to the ER and you see that there are literally signs that say, if you yes. cannot breathe, if you have chest pain... Yes.